And finally, this this is the big one, guys. Uh, all according to uh, what Mr. Tim Lim has said, and I should send him a link and uh, see if he can't come on. We have Common America, number one. I'll read off the description he gave. It's a lint, lenticular, what, what do you call it? Uh, laminate uh, cover. This is the rarest Common America out there, and it is autographed by Mr. Pellegrini and Mr. Lim themselves. Very cool. Yep. Oh, <laughs> so much outrage, but it's so good. The it's big the question was, what do I start that at? Holy crap, I can't keep the light off of it, can I? It's like when they say there are good fats that are good for you. That is mm -hmm. the good fats uh, of, of outrage. So, guys, question is, what numbers are those text split? Is that the first volume? Texas, that the, that's issues 1 through 13. Okay. Because Skip was asking, yeah, what the whole set was. Yeah. Oh, Xander, I think, has been here. I think he's been waiting on the Common America. <laughs> yeah, it is It is the first volume. I have the same, like, the lenticular, but it's not the same cover. It's a different cover that I have than that one. That one. Yeah, like I said, this is all the right. rarest of all. And the big question has been, like, what do I start this off at? Because I've oh. been looking up. Now, the one I got, I've noticed, is starting at $50. And that's this one right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm, and if this is rare, what would you start it at? Uh, would you start it at 50 and see where it goes? Would you start it at uh, 75? What would, what would you say? What would you say around that number then? What do you start it off with guys? This is the first time I'm ever, the first and only time I'm ever going to do that. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm asking you guys. Bidding is uh, over. I'll, I'll just say as soon as Moranya says go. We'll find on the second. There you go. Ash says start at sixty. That's what Mister On Comic says. I'm uh, trying to get the glare off the. Uh... It's a holographic cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that that's that's not bad. Yeah, that's probably the best I think they can get with the lights and everything. Yeah, the, there is no bins on this book. There's nothing like that. That's just the light reflecting off the cover. There you go. All right, we'll start it at sixty. That seems like a like a good starting point, yeah. And we get the go. Sixty seems fair. I just sent a link to uh, Lim oh, I, if he wants to come. Yeah, on I, 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 was, I, I did too. I was talking to him. He's gonna pop on a second. There you go. There you go. So yeah, common. Amer so for anybody that might be here, maybe I don't know what Common America is. It is an awesome superhero story. <coughs> Mark Pellegrini, Tim Lim created um, think back to like the the miss marvel uh carol danvers this is more fun than that i feel like almost or at least it's a different kind of fun uh it's like it's, a manga slash like a um, very manga-esque yeah very manga-esque it's got that it's got a very distinct manga feel to it it's really light really fun and really light-hearted there is some there are some like heartwarming and touching moments too I'm actually flipping through the first volume right now. Um, I mean, obviously, you're going to get some cheesecake in there. So if you love the cheesecake, you're going to be. Yeah, you know that. What are you? No, talking? I'm looking at what Ash, <laughs> Ash's bid. Ash for the oh! first time bid. I'm seeing people I've I've it's never seen before convention. bidding here. I know, uh, including so Ash. I think maybe Tim has said, "Hey, we've got a uh, we got a book here on auction." Which thank it's, you if you did. Uh, actually, um, just so I know too, when you said the Green Lanterns and the Texas Blood, is that fifteen dollars on either one or fifteen for both? Or it's what fifteen is fifteen for the Green, fifteen for uh, for, for the, the Texas. Texas. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Hey Tim, hello to Tim. Hey, What's up? yo. What's up, Tim? How's it going, guys? You can verify tell, that's your Tell signature. everybody what I've got here, because I've tried to look this up, and you said this is the rarest copy. I literally could not find any information on this thing beyond so, what you told me. Just based on number, and people can see it on the original Indiegogo website, but it is the rarest copy of Common America Volume 1, the very first edition. So there were two printings of it that were essentially printed simultaneously. One was the one for Kickstarter, which featured um, the cover that's on the back cover of this one. And then you have the Indiegogo variant, which is this one. But because our Indiegogos typically don't sell as much or we order such a lower quantity of them, mm -hmm. it is actually the, the lowest of the print runs of the very first volume of it. 
Um, this is the original version that is square bound with the holographic foil cover. We did it one more time with volume two, but um, after that we upgraded to hard covers moving on with volume three. So these are fairly rare. You'll find them on eBay typically ranging anywhere between 20 to $85, depending on when the time of day is and uh, if you're lucky or not. So Well, right now we're at 105 with uh, Mr. NS. Oh, good. Wonderful. Cool. Yeah, yeah, so. that's cool. Um, but yeah, it is a rare run. And what even makes it rarer is the fact that it has two signatures on it, which is from Mark and myself. We actually don't charge for signatures, but... Uh, the reason they're rare, even though they're quote unquote free, is because in order to get them, you typically have to see us at a convention, in which case you're paying, I don't know, 20 to $50 at the door to come in for the co for any convention as it is. So it does have both signatures and I can verify them. The first one is myself and the second one is Mark Pellegrini. Hey, E? Yeah? I, I will make an exception for Tim's book. Okay. Because I believe we are there, are we not? Not yet, sir. Really? <laughs> we have just passed a Donnerbrook, though. Uh, for those of you who are new, we do have little sayings for how many bids come up. And we are at, well, I, it's like fisticuffs, a Donnerbrook, and then, of course, a firefight. Uh, it came off, I don't know if you ever saw, um, what's that, Boondock Saints with uh, Willem Dafoe. And he's like, it was a firefight. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> so, Yeah, I got it from that. It's something cheesy to yell when a whole bunch of people are bidding on something. And for, for for reference, people can even go on like eBay and see like the Antarctic Press version, which is not the yeah. full version. That one is selling right now for fifty two dollars, and that's the All right. and fourth. Let's printing, see, NS. Uh, um, hold on, just a sec. Holy crap! Uh, Xander not only bumped that thing from one twenty five to one fifty, he started a firefight. And if you Sorry. had two hours and sixteen minutes. And a guest spot from the artist. You won. <laughs> there you go. Right. Yeah, we like to keep things cheesy around here. <laughs> yeah. Cheese yeah, is good. Anyone who I... goes to eBay right now can look. There's uh, about four or five copies of Common America Volume 1, the fourth printing or the fifth, the one by Antarctic Press. Mm -hmm. And the lowest offer right now is going for $47.96. And that's okay. the fourth printing. Well, I'll say this right now. Officially, Ronan has made this the highest book in this auction's history. Before this, just to show you how freaking important Common American, number one, this book is, the last book, Tim, to make it to $150 was the very first appearance of Zorro. Classic. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. In comic book history. Yeah, so your book is right up there with that. Well, I'm, I'm, you heads up. I'm honored, and I, I want to tell people in the chat who have who maybe are longtime listeners or maybe first time or new ones, but my respect for Englantine and everyone in here is tremendous. I've known him for the last um, five to six years. We we go back actually, you know, yep. fairly far as far as like pretty much half of our comic book career is concerned. Um, and uh, he's a good guy. I've met him in person um, at least on two occasions, and. Uh, I, I love what he's doing. So anytime that I can help, I, I surely wish I had I had done something to help sooner from all the help that he's given us. But um, I certainly appreciate it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us. I know we can be kind of boring, and uh, as you know, I'm a fast walker when it comes to Holy theme parks. Crap. You but... are like a, you, I know why you like rabbits now. <laughs> By the way, Xander popped this thing up to 200. And it so I um, think at 200 was Xander. Speaking of rabbits, that's also why at um, Disney parks, I don't really collect anything. I'm mostly there's just there for just the fun and the ambience mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, I, I used to collect, um, what is it, Splash Mountain stuff, but that's going away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, I was, I'm surprised they did it. I thought they were just paying lip service. I to, did too. Yeah. Because they um, dropped like $5 billion recently to create the Star Wars lands to yeah. redo the roads. So I was like, wow, they're they're actually going for it. 205 for Common America. Well, you know, if you and are going to go from it, I mean, frogs are slippery in addition to being fast. So, you know, they, you do still have a fast animal there. But, yeah, it's kind of a bummer, though, about and Splash he, Mountain. Yeah, it's a bummer because that's my favorite ride. I think we actually, when he uh, when uh, he was doing the Homegrown Tourists more regularly, we actually took a, a long vote 
on that one. I think we all agree that definitely wasn't the top five, if not the number one that we Splash chose. Splash Mountain? Yeah. Or yeah, uh, Haunted Mansion was number one. But that was number one, one yeah. There. yeah. I haven't done this either for a while, but let's see if it fits. And the other thing, too, about it is so um, typically, I like Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Yeah. And then the other one too, like I collect things where the collection is going to be very small because there's not that much stuff out there. Um, but I like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, so I typically have. Um, oh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is amazing. Yeah, so I have I have quite a few uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit things as well. For a little extra protection now, I will make sure that it is in. And top while he was turning that into Com America. No, nope. we got a two hundred and fifty dollar bid. Two hundred and fifty from Xander. Oh, nice. I don't think this is going to be beat. No, what I did was I put it in a top lo loader for some extra protection. Oh, so, great, great, great. You're yeah. learning. There you go. Well, I I used to do that, um, but then I I just ran out of top loaders. And the other thing I'll tell people is this comes from my personal collection. So here's a funny story. Um, I used to do. Um, the convention artwork for Dan Gilvezan, that name might sound familiar to some people, but he's the voice of Bumblebee, the original Bumblebee from G1 oh, Transformers. Wow. And Dan Gilvezan, he, he gave me a copy of his book, and it's like my life as the voice of Bumblebee or something. And he told this funny story. He said that because this was before the internet, you weren't able to gauge popularity unless you got fan letters and stuff like that. That was really yeah. the only way you were able to tell. And oh, he said excuse that. Excuse me, just a moment. I need to ahead. answer a question sure. uh, about the book. Uh, would it fit regular size or the other one? That way, I know how much is set aside. Dude, the the shipping's free. I forgot to say that part. Uh, over <laughs> if it's uh, hundred, if you order one hundred and fifty dollars worth of books or or more, the shipping is free. So yeah, so this, it, you don't have to worry about. I got to ask, you know, yeah. so so people know that Tim Lim has actually touched this book. I have. And His then, fingerprints have touched. It's got you, yeah. Tim Lim DNA. <laughs> <laughs> and and there is if if they're on Twitter, they can see the photographic evidence. I did say this is the actual copy. You can see my um, hand, and you can tell I signed it and everything. But oh, that's awesome. Anyway, Dan Gilvezin. So when Transformers was going out of style and out of the mode. He had bought at like clearance a bunch of Bumblebee figures, and he would just give them to kids for like christmas and halloween and stuff like trick-or-treaters mm -hmm. and then it wasn't until years later that he realized kind of the pop culture impact it had and by then i think he only had like two <laughs> left in his collection and for me personally we had done like this major major convention in august of last year it's bell county comic-con and i had set aside things in storage because uh, my wife and i had moved and recently it was like around two and a half weeks ago, I just happened to have found that box. And I was like, what's in this box? And I was like, oh, it's like 15 copies of uh, Common America <laughs> Volume 1. Like, I was wondering, like, you know, I, I could have sworn I had more, but on my shelf, I only have like two copies of it. So I'm like, well, I'm going to sit on this pile. But then I remembered, like, uh, you had done that stream. And I thought, you know what? Like, I need to give these to people who are important, like people who I feel like I are very close friends. I, I'm very You're important. You did, <laughs> yeah. RDV, you, Vangman, you probably already have a copy. I'm pretty sure you do. You, you I do. I have it somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I get a copy. When, when we met it, it, and uh, we went to uh, Chef Art Smith's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the homecoming. Homecoming. You brought along and you actually gave me permission. I did. Uh, and I, I appreciate that. One thing I'm very, I, I'm not ashamed. I'm not a, a rich man. I'm, I'm actually a poor man. And I've, uh, um, I've always appreciated, but you gave me moral per per permission to sell this copy, but it, it will never be done because it's a gift. And I certainly appreciate that. I thought that was, uh, that was awesome of you. When I'll, you I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll tell you what though, <laughs> I'm not saying this will happen, but if it, if it ever becomes a phenomenon, uh, I would say I will hold a copy for you. And if you can, <laughs> if you can, if you can sell it for $5,000, you sell that, and you just let me know, and I could be an old man, and I'll say, I have another copy. Like, you know what? Okay, I'll hold you that. You know, <laughs> I, I do have a sort of a whorish nature, so I guess if you did uh, offer enough, maybe I would. You know, I got a copy going for five grand now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> say, yeah, I, I'm definitely holding on to mine and my wall might number two. Xander is pointing out that this is another reason to nab it because it is hard to travel and see Mark. It's uh, it is yes. misdirect from uh, well, Twitter especially Republican. during COVID, and really messed that up too. Yeah, it did. And the other thing too is um, the reason I haven't been paying attention to stream, but the whole day 
my wife and I have been at a car dealership because we need a new car. Uh-oh. The interest rate is killer right now, oh, guys. Yeah, like, I, it I is murder. It. Dude, getting a used car is insane. They're all- No, that's what we... Okay, I'll tell you a funny story. So we... The MSRP for this new car... I'm not going to say the price. Let's just make up a number. Let's say it's 30K. We... Found one, only one on the lot, and we called every dealership in Arkansas, all sold out. And so we found one used. It was bought in February and sold back in March. So it was only used for a month. It cost 15K more than the MSRP of a new one. And so I was like, this can't be right. So I called two of my friends who are big into cars and I said, is this correct? And they said, it is rare, but it happens in downward economies where they yep. know that the scarcity of getting a new vehicle is so much that it makes the older vehicles, the used ones, more expensive. Yep. So it's almost like the comic book market when a comic book becomes more expensive <laughs> on the aftermarket. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So we, fi- we we were looking at the financing and I bought a car in 2020 and um, it's one, it was 1.9% interest. <laughs> Oh, we got the one minute warning. Okay. I do have to do a little uh this part here. So uh only two things got bids, but I'm not sad. <laughs> well, I, that's what I was trying to find uh, out. What was the opening bid on that Tales of Asgard book? Tales of Ad- Asgard starts at 15. Uh you know what? Um, but this book has done so good. Let's uh, let's drop some prices here. Okay. Let's give a little extra time. Let's drop some prices. Hey, now that I get money, I All can right. afford to drop the prices. No, seriously. <laughs> seriously. That's exactly how I'm seeing it. All right. Um, the the common America is going to Xander at 250. All right. Let the the amazing Spider-Man I started at 20, let's say 15. Tales of Asgard, I started at 15, let's say 10. Uh Superboy, I started at eight, let's say five, or, or started at 10 for both that and Gotham, let's say five each. Uh, let's go, uh, I said 10 on the Harley Quinn. There's uh, five issues. Let's go five bucks. And Green Lantern will start at 10. There we go. We'll give it a few extra minutes, see if anybody wants to take care of the discounts. Because thank you, by okay. the way. Very I much. would threaten to quit if we can't get five bucks for that 80-page giant. But a lot of people might be waiting for that. So I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> Actually, we just got five bucks from Glenzer on the Superboy and the Harley Quinn. Yay. Yeah. Basically, anyway, I just, so I Zach, just you it. asked I about Tales of Asgard and then bid on Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah. I got to keep you on your toes. <laughs> so, so Tim, uh, the very first that book there there came out with the patches, right? The postcards. I don't. I think the first one came with postcards. The second one came with the patches. Patch. Okay. Yes. Uh huh. Because I noticed that they don't get the patches anymore. <laughs> no. The, and, okay. So the other thing is this: I worked in merchandising for almost a decade. I, just because there are things I can point out doesn't mean that I collect them personally. And so sometimes I just have to yeah. rely on faith. And like one thing that happened with the patches was we gave that as a free thing with uh, the second volume. But afterwards, Iconic Comics, they started selling them, I think, for like 5 or $10 on their site. Oh, so you're like, yeah. Yeah, and I thought to myself, like, that's up to them if they want to sell it. Cause, you Ash, know, I'll take care of you, man. Don't worry. I'm dropping it right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, that's, that... <laughs> And that that was funny. <laughs> I'm not looking at the chat. What did someone he say? Goes, yeah, Ash was the only bid. person that bid full price on something. Yeah. So <laughs> no, I just dropped it. I just dropped it to the same as Green Lantern because they were. At the same <clears throat> yeah. But once again, dude, this is uh, this is <laughs> this is helping out because this is not a pay week for Gail. So I, and I just hit minus six dollars. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, thank God, this pay. Thank you very much, by the way. Oh yeah, my I, pleasure. I'm not good at this kind of shit. So uh, yeah, by, by all means, thank you. No, like like I said, I, I think it's a long time coming. Uh, my regret yeah. is that if I had the opportunity to do something to pay you back for your kindness, I would have done it a long time ago. I think but, you already had. I thought you you had many 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 times, and there wait, was wait. no no sense of payback. Uh, but wait. I certainly appreciate it. Angle team was kind to you. That's rare. <laughs> Anglin team does something that's rare amongst YouTubers, which is he will a lot of times take an unpopular opinion because he feels it's the right thing to do. And I think that um, having met us and vouching for our character, because there are times when I want to say something, but I believe in, in behaving professionally, at least publicly. I have private opinions that I think that I keep to myself and I talk about with friends, as people do. Um, but there are just times when I feel like, you know what? 
I, I, I know I'm right. I know that what I'm doing is correct, but I don't want to get into it because some people will use it to monetize it. And so mm -hmm. when someone yeah. like Englantine, who does not have to say anything, when he just says, you know what, I'm just going to say something because I feel like there's something that needs to be said, he does not have to do that. And I think he stuck his neck out. And there are times when I think it's hurt him. And well, we, we talk about it a lot. And I'm like, and I even told him, I was like, I think if one day ever came where I did have the opportunity to pay it back, literally, I would do it to the best of my ability. And like I said, I someone had pointed out to me on eBay. They were like, um, I'll tell you a funny story. You know, Captain Cummings? Yeah. yeah. So Captain Cummings, he's so blunt. <laughs> and, he's very uh, much is, yes. He always, he always tells the truth. He always gives his opinion. And uh, I said, um, so what do you have in, in your collection of ours? And he said, I only have your omnibus. And I said, but you told me that you like have bought some of our other books. He said, I flipped them on eBay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. And there's a, a debate amongst a lot of creators where they're like, I hate it when people flip books. Like, that's not how you do it. And I said, no, no, no. That's how the market works because you're yep. able to gauge like the interest. If people are paying $50 for a book, it's because they want to pay $50 for a book. And he had told me, he said, do you know how much your books go on eBay? And I said, not really. I haven't looked in a while. And he's like, you need to look. How much do you think? And I said, 15 or 20. He was like, no. Like I sold, I sold the Walmart omnibus. I bought like two of those and I sold them for a ridiculous amount of money. Like you need to start paying attention to them. Oh shit. I think uh, I'm, I'm going to ask Gail for an allowance. <laughs> <laughs> so now, um, the, the uh, Cam Cummings, when we, when Comicscape first started and it was, you know, me and Doug and uh, Captain Cummings and, and uh, Richard, D, uh, what was he calling himself? Diversity, uh, Diversity Comics. Comics. Yeah. When uh, when we first started, I we, we had our little uh, DM on Twitter that we were talking to each other about. And I described it as this. You would have uh, Diversity in Comics blew up really quick. Uh, we actually, uh, Cummings and I actually had our channels first. And he came in and just rocketed, man. Um, and I always described it as it's kind of like playing King of the Mountain on top of the mountain was Richard. He was the most popular of us. And then you had on either side, just below, Doug and I, because we were always the more uh, reasonable, I guess. I'm a little bit more um, emotional. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, but, but there we were. And so, and I always said, so when the hordes of SJW come for it, you know, we're ready to battle as they always tried to attack Rich. And then you have Captain Cummings who says, fuck it, I'm going to jump right in the middle of these guys. <laughs> and well, he's going to go to go to town now. Uh, you know, and that's him. He's very, like I said, he's very blunt and he's uh, um, headstrong. Yeah, uh, we've we've had words. He and I, my brother, hated him, but uh, that actually got but, uh, got me in trouble with diversity in comics because um, he actually instead of saying he he made an insult and instead of saying cummings he said diversity and comics holy crap that was a bad thing <laughs> yeah hey uh, he, sorry, sorry to jump in but ansel uh right now yeah. it's at 250 but if you want to uh give a bid it's uh 255 or 251 or higher so yeah yeah and so and ash had a great question uh you know so tim i know there's a few folks on here uh in the oh. chat you know that haven't uh read common america what's the elevator pitch the elevator pitch is that there is a fashion designer who gets struck by cosmic debris in a freak accident and she gets imbued by superpowers that turns her into a living battery. But she realizes the villains that she has to fight a lot of times are not villains that you can win with but fisticuffs. So the ultimate moral of the story is she finds herself in situations where she has to do what's right versus what's fashionable. That creates the moral dilemma that she encounters. Whenever you're dealing with, let's say, a giant monster that you can beat with uh, electricity powers or whether you're fighting um, a media mogul who basically has the power of influence on their side, she has to draw that fine line and walk that tightrope between these two worlds where sometimes the villains are not as black and white as they seem, but they lurk in the gray area where she has to use her self-reliance, her grit, her fortitude um, to win the day. And we feel like that epitomizes kind of like a quintessential American is the idea of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, um, overcoming all insurmountable odds, being kind of the underdog. But the big thing is the idea of self-reliance and self-determination. That at the heart 
makes up a good American. And we, we have that kind of epitomized in that very first volume. And I think that that's what has resonated with people. I think, like, for example, our Japanese audience, you have to look at it in terms of how the Japanese see us. Uh, I put out this tweet a few days ago, and it said, be the United States that Japan thinks you are. And <laughs> yep, I saw that. I saw that. That's yeah. an awesome tweet, yeah. It is, and, you know, it's, it's her wearing, like, the American flag bikini, like, yeah! And the Japanese like it, because, I mean, I hate to say it, but it, there is a truth to it. There is something funny in the positive stereotypes that are embodied with a character. And I think that's one reason, for example, in My Hero uh, Academia, you have the character of All Might. And All Might is the quintessential American, even though he's Japanese. Um, it's he's... something when you see, like over in not just Japan, but China and such, Hong Kong, when they were uh, revolting and they were um, using the American flag as a symbol. Right. And over here, we've got people burning the flag and saying they don't want to be American anymore. Our goal with the character is that she will. We can give this. Uh, I think uh, this Ansel, is what, it's up to two two hundred and fifty, so it'd be two hundred and fifty one or uh, higher, or actually two hundred and fifty dollars and fifty cents because we go by fifty cent increments. Yeah, wow. but please don't play that game at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. and just to, and just to clarify too, the 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 one that you're auctioning off is not the one that you were showing off of the side there. Oh, no, 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 no. I was just kind of, because this was on hand. I was he was just kind of being a, a breaker. When, we, when this yeah. book came up, I was like, okay, I want to check out yeah. everything. I've got, the, and that's basically it. I've got that other book I showed and then uh, the, oh, the omnibus. Yeah. The on, yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Tim, you brought you brought the Japan, in, and I just wanted to ask you, wh where did the, the Japanese audience really start finding it? Because I, I, I get a kick out of every time that I see a, a Twitter that you or Mark have, you know, forwarded, you know, from, from somebody in Japan with the fan art, uh, what have you. And just seeing that, seeing that side of the growth has just been uh, awesome. Part of it was just by accident, even though part of it was by design. So our marketing budget, we... Um, we don't have many YouTuber friends. I mean, obviously, we have Englantine here. Uh, we have Douglas Ernst. We have a couple people like West from Thinking Critical. You got me and Zach. We got you and Zach. We got, <laughs> we got yeah, the, the Geeky Puppet Show. But the way we allocated our marketing budget was you have to get the name out there. Even though like I'm working, I need to make sure that people are talking about it. So what I did was I scoured the internet on Instagram, uh, Pixiv, ArtStation, you name it. And I try to find the diamonds in the rough, like people who are really good artists who I feel like can work on a schedule. And I pay them to do art. And it just so happens that the only people who can keep deadlines are Japanese, Korean, and Taiwanese artists. Um, hold on just a sec. Um, Ansel put $300 on the book and then it was answered by Xander at $350. And okay. yay. <laughs> so anyway, the, the Japanese, I, because it, by happenstance, I was like, well, we need people who can make and fulfill schedules as far as when we need certain things done. It just so happened that they all came from basically Asian countries. And that what happened was other Japanese artists started taking notice. And especially the ones who could speak English, they picked um, it up. Ansel just came back with 500. Or, uh, well, uh, Con uh, Xander popped it back up to 400, which I wasn't going to put up because until somebody challenged him on it, but uh, Ansel just put 500 on the book. I'll tell you what, um, I can do this, uh, for that price. Um, if he doesn't mind when he gives you his mailing address, okay. I can send something out to him too. Okay, yeah, okay, at this point, there's uh. You're not only going to get this book, but you're going to get an extra gift from Tim Lim. Of course, his choice. It will, and I won't. I won't say what it is. It'll be good though, and it'll be personalized and. It'll science. be a picture of it'll Tim in a swimsuit with the blonde wig. With <laughs> GI hops. What on earth? Yeah. The, funny <laughs> thing, the funny thing is, is Glenzer comes up and says, "So, are you going to give us fifty percent off?" Uh, no. Um, but what I what I know is funny because it hasn't been spoken out loud is that Eric just went, so So we're quitting early tonight, right? <laughs> we're so good anyway, for the next two weeks, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a bunch of Japanese artists, it just was like a snowball effect where they all were telling each other and then trading off. And so now um, we did a stream last night where Mark had revealed that, for example, we have a Japanese Twitter account 
and it's only been up for about two weeks, but he grew by about 2,000 people um, just on the account alone, all Japanese, not like a single American um, in that account. So one thing that we're doing is right now, the whole Common America Library is currently being translated into Japanese, and it should be finished in by August. So moving forward, all of our books will be in English and Japanese. Yeah, that's, that's exciting. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, Ansel put 700 on the book, and Xander just said 1,000. I'm... Um, I'm about to have a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So in case e, you guys don't hear from E for the rest of the night, you can go ahead and send that money to me. <laughs> no, you guys don't understand. I've, I don't get paid this much ever. I mean, in my entire life, uh, I only had, I think three, uh, for acting gigs and such thousand dollar paychecks. So. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm getting speechless here, dudes. Uh, I'm not saying stop. <laughs> Just saying, wow. Um, okay, I'd, I'd Xander. I'd like to thank whoever made that possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, well, I can say, I, you know, I'm definitely happy that I got in on, on the ground floor. Uh, same. To support Common America, because I'm, especially because I'm really happy that, I was able to get in on the uh, early tiers to get a couple of uh, original art pieces. So but yeah, uh, nice. oh, uh, Marania is is the voice of reason. She's saying uh, everyone keep track of your bids and make sure you're not going over a budget and losing houses and such. Because the worst, the the one thing we do not want is, and and this is personal, uh, you to lose anything and to feel bad about coming here or uh, fake bids. <laughs> that's and and that does have to be said so yeah yeah um uh but ansel said 1500 to which xander said 2000 holy crap do i hear a think, kidney did, did <laughs> you even think that this would happen there uh tim uh no not really i mean but then again i don't keep up with auctions too much except ebay all right <laughs> well i guess i could concede that i would have lost this as running Okay, Xander. I look. I get it. You got to. Um, I've told a lot of stories here. The big, the big, <laughs> joke, the big joke is, of course, uh, that I've been working under a bridge, doing things that guys would do under a bridge um, to, to make money for the family. Gross. Yeah. So, uh, trust me. Um, well, Ansel just went five thousand for a hundred G. You. We'll get a picture of Angleteen in the in the Common America costume, okay? What will what I can do is um, what I said I was going to send was I will send a piece of original art. Okay. It won't be big. I don't draw big. I draw pretty small, actually. But it'll be Which, it'll be fairly way, simplistic. If I can, I, we I know it's still uh, packed up with all my important documents, but I have two pieces of original art from Tim Lim. That he literally drew on a freaking paper tablecloth and then was going to leave it. And yeah. I said, bullshit. And I tore it off. <laughs> <laughs> all we, all we can say is that it was, I think it was Ego the Living Planet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. If that's what you want to say, if yeah, that's as that's, far as you want to say, was. that's as far as I'll say. Or also, it was the man in the moon, um, like on, on Journey into the Imagination when you have, yeah. uh, what's his name? And uh, it, it, yeah, so it looked like Ego, the Living Planet, and also you yeah. had the Alfred Hitchcock outline. Yeah, the, I forgot about the Alfred Hitchcock one. Yeah, I've still got it. Um, once again, I put it in the uh, in my filing with uh, with my passport and my birth certificate. <laughs> uh, for those who are, for those who are wondering about um, val validity, if it turns out anybody is fake bidding, it'll go back to the last legit. Oh, of at, course. At the, at the yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Tim, I just want to say, too, this is There's a little one sidebar. Thing I do not like, one thing I do not like or accept is... Um, messing with the auction. Messing with the auction. What What is it called when you when you uh, up, up bids and all that kind of stuff? Uh, that's a good... There's a term for it. I don't know what it is. That's what I was saying, too. Like, it's like, if you bid this amount of money, is there a limit before your credit card says uh, you can't send this much? Or is, there, is there a limit for the, the credit card that says we've detected unusual activity? Yeah. Bid gouging. That's what Glenzer said. Bid gouging. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, Ansel, did you uh, retract it? 
He just said, I, okay, I lose. And then, yep. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So. Okay, so. Uh, so I'm just, just just confused as far as where the last legit would be then. As Ash says Xander is the top bidder at 2,000. Yeah. Okay. Ash is keeping track in the thing. Is that but, like before the 5,000 that he uh, retracted? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do we hear one million? Yes. <laughs> for one million dollars. <laughs> no, I was gonna mean? say I got I got really excited earlier this week, Tim, when I saw the announcement about the Common Academy uh comic. That got me like that sounds amazing. I'm I'm looking um, forward to reading that. Okay, so uh and uh Xander. Um if you send you go through PayPal, send the send the money through PayPal, make sure. 100% you say, hey, this is Xander at EXE from YouTube. Here's my real name, my address, the, the money and all that. And uh, that way I know it's exactly you. Um, and uh, I'll give, if I'll, I'll if you give me permission, I will send it to, I'll give your address to Tim so he can send you the original art uh, to your house as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And on PayPal, is it Englantine or is it Englantine Loves Comics? Or? It's actually MediaMadmen1 at gmail.com. It's scrolling across the bottom. There if you, you need spelling and everything, we've got it scrolling. It'll come around just a little bit. Actually, what we're going to do, Englantine, is this. Because I typically don't look at um, anyone's information at all. Like, not unless someone specifically uh -huh. asks me, hey, look under my account. I will actually send it to you okay. on Tuesday. And then I'll let you go ahead and send it to the, um, to the bidder. Okay, so there you go. I'll wait for his. Uh, I'll wait for the art, and then I'll send it all together in one package for you, Xander. All yeah. righty. And I'll send it and insure it on Tuesday, so that you you can get it um, within like let's say two days. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. thank you very very much. Thank you very very very, very much. All righty. <laughs> and then uh, just, uh, just I like Ash, Ash is like. Uh, play it cool, England team. Play it cool. <laughs> and then, uh, Xander, if, if you're the one who wins the bid um, and it's a legitimate bid, just if you want me to personalize it or anything, like I said, I'll get Mark to sign it too. Um, you just let me know so that we can create like a one of a kind item. Um, I, I'm just humbled. I mean, that's a lot of money. So typically, like for example, at conventions, whenever people do put down that amount, we typically give them like a lot of stuff to uh, offset that. Because I mean, I don't, I honestly don't know how to react to it because that is like, a lot, so thank it's, you. I mean, you're helping Englantine out. Um, it's, it's exactly that. It's humbling. It, it it really is. You've just you've just helped my family out greatly. Um, and it's not just with normal bills. Now we can afford to do like dental things that we haven't been able to do. Or we can get the car fixed and such. You know, you you've uh, you've helped out. You you help out the family immensely. Also, I can only imagine. It's like wow. You you kind of feel it when you you realize yes we've got a we've got an international audience but when you see this kind of thing you know the love that people have for your creation sir. All right. Uh, Xander said he sent it, but it's unreviewed because it's a large. Keep that in mind. So. Yeah. Uh, nope. Makes I sense. Can message you on Twitter because I'm uh, Mister. Okay, dude. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You got my D. I'm an open DM. Uh. So send me whatever and. We'll keep in contact, and I'll make oh, sure you have the tracking and all. Yeah, that. yeah, I, I think I know him on Twitter, so I'll, I'll send you. Yeah. I won't say what it is. I will send you a lot of good stuff. We'll just the put it that way. Oh Bye. yeah, it, I follow Mr. Mariah, X. It looks like yeah, it looks like uh, we could close out the lot. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. Vangman. Yeah. Now, now, now that he's rich, you think he'll start paying us? <laughs> Are we no longer and friends? I never treated you guys like friends. Come on. That's true. That's, a, that's obvious. <laughs> that's what I was telling Ash uh, in the chat. It's so like, well, we don't even, we don't even get like a snow cone. Him. It's like so, a Tim, you got any more books for next week? <laughs> like I said, I wish that, believe it or not, I don't actually own everything that we've ever made. Um, if you have the original standee from Common America, you are sitting on a one-of-a-kind oh, item. I do not own it. I actually gave my last one to Mark. Um, so I'm all out of those uh, patches. I don't any, I don't own any of the patches. So we need either. Mark to get on here then. then. <laughs> <laughs> me, uh, Bianca is saying Tim Lemon, Tim Lemon, Doug aren't uh, stir solid guys. Let me tell you something that really um, kind of nailed it for me for for Doug. Okay, I'm standing in line. We're at Disney at Disney Springs. We're standing in line. He's going to get a, a couple of souvenirs, and we start talking about um, him being in the army. 
And he says, no, 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 I don't want credit because of uh, apparently he wasn't, uh, you know, he, 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 according to what he was saying, and maybe I got it wrong, but he didn't see a lot of dangerous action. So he didn't want the praise that one would give a soldier. And I went, holy shit, that is awesome. That is just, I mean, you know, because obviously you want to thank everybody. Thank you for your service, you know. And uh, he said that, and that just kind of floored me. That's, and, and by the way, after all that, we get uh, naked hoes that they have cheap sex and dinner. Well, you, well you, they're, they're, they're trying to get some of that cabbage that's been flying through there you this go. last job. So. Uh, yeah, but no, I, I, I really liked, uh, I really thought that was uh, pretty cool of Doug. But Doug, Doug was a pretty cool guy um, when I met him. And uh, he was pretty cool. And Tim didn't yell at me when he, we told him the story about how I identified another Asian guy as him. Uh, I think that stuff is funny. Because I think we all look alike, too. Did I ever tell you when I was in, when I was in China? Um, I was like, man, I feel like this is how clones feel in movies. <laughs> because uh, we were there in like Beijing. Uh, we were there in Beijing, Hong Kong, and Shanghai. And I was like, golly, I feel like I'm having an identity crisis because all these people look alike. <laughs> And then they, I've realized they all look like me too. So, so one of the reasons I don't go down to Florida is a lot of angle teens. Oh, we're yeah, all the bald, fat old people are down here. So, yeah, we're, it's it's just everybody look no trust. Well, me. I don't go to basketball games. Everyone else there is taller than me, or at least as tall as me. So I'm just like Zach. I'm used to being the That's tallest. That's the reason the... you don't go to basketball games. <laughs> I used to play basketball. Thank you. I, I played. Do we end on a high that. note and not just go down the negative path? Make fun of Zach. Okay, so yeah, I right now I do have a pending from you there, uh, Mr. X. Yep. So yeah, it's all I'm good. That's awesome, Mr. Well, Mr. X. Thank you. Um, like I said, I, I think I've seen you definitely on uh, Twitter. So I'm going to give you a nice little care package. I'll send it to uh, Englantine on Tuesday. It'll have now, some very rare things in it, um, and I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you for helping my friend out because like, I don't. I'm not making any money off of this uh this is this is just me helping him out for all the years of friendship that he's but shown so you so guys don't you. think i'm a jerk i offered i asked <laughs> him. i asked him i did uh because that's one thing if people send books you have the option of uh do you uh, is it a donation or do you want to cut or do you just want credit whatever so yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh hey tim uh want to ask you one more question um so uh how did you guys find, uh, is it Jeff Spokes or Jeff Speaks? I Jeff won. Spokes. Spokes. Um, so what it. I do is I find all of our help through um, Instagram. Uh, like I said, art, sti art sites, art station, Pixiv, whatever. And on Instagram, I was scrolling and I was like, oh, look, this Adam Hughes art looks really good. And I clicked on it. And I was like, wait, that's not Adam Hughes. And I looked through his feed and I thought, wow, this guy like has only 2,000 followers? Like, this is insane. And everything was hand-drawn, and I looked at it, I studied it, and I said, this guy easily is in that kind of Terry Dodson, Adam Hughes territory. Mm -hmm. And so I just happened to email him and say, hey, are you available for published commission work? I've seen that you've done work for Aphrodite 9. You've done work for Blade Runner. Um, I would be really interested. And he said, yeah, sure, hit me up. So I did, and he's fast. So uh, even though I said that all mostly ninety nine percent of our artists are Japanese or um, in some Asian country, can, he's can actually you give from... me just a second. Sure. Um, okay, so this is what we got the stop. So this is what we have: um, Common America to Xander. I got to cross out because I had to go into NS. Make sure I don't that up. Um, okay, so we got uh, Common Amer America going to Xander for two thousand. And then we have uh, the Green Lantern to Zach for 10. We've got the Texas Blood to Ash for 10. And uh, Harley Quinn to Glenzer for 5. And Superboy to Glenzer for 5. Let me get these down. And I guess we'll put another lot up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you <laughs> very, very much. By the way, I don't think this is going to be topped if unless I get a first appearance of the Punisher or something. No. <laughs> you know, um, I'm, I'm just sad there's no streamers oh, or balloons flying from the yeah. camera. I know, right? <laughs> but, okay, okay. Yeah. You know what? You know what? I will do something special for you, new guys, because you have to see this, Tim. You haven't seen this, I'm sure, oh, but you boy. have to see keep your this. shirt on. Oh no, I know what he's going to do. <laughs> okay, because ladies and gentlemen, oh, I'm going to. I, I I would like to present. I don't even remember the names of the song, but it's the most awesome thing you will ever see. It's me and Eric. <laughs> <laughs>